sometime in January, I saw some expert talk about Broadway shutting down. And I remember thinking, oh my God, that's not going to happen. It was unimaginable that New York would not have theater, would not have shows on Broadway and crowds in Times Square every day. The NBA announced that they were shutting down. And I was like, okay, if the NBA is shutting down, we're athletes, we're performing for the thousands of people, we should be shutting down too. One of the ushers tested positive for COVID. The set had just been put up on the stage. And of course the crew, as usual, were the first ones to get the news. And I heard, ah, oh, Broadway shut down. And now we find ourselves sort of living with a new reality. Broadway's like, uh at the epicenter of New York energy and creativity. That's what brings the most tourists to New York City is Broadway, Broadway shows. And that affects the restaurants, that affects the hotels, that affects the MTA. Shortly after Broadway shut down, we heard of the death of Terrence McNally, one of the first famous people to die of this virus. And the first thing I thought was, oh my God, the lights of Broadway won't dim for Terrence McNally because they're already out. Three months ago, everybody I knew was working. Everybody had a job. Now suddenly, nobody has a job. We're getting by unemployment. I'm currently gonna move out of my apartment. We actors are in a lot of trouble. Of course, it's happening to a third of the country and climbing. This tragedy helps us to appreciate people who uh, were uh, marginalized uh, workers that we now realize are the most important people, the people that are keeping us alive. Broadway Feeds Bellevue is this cool thing that a group of friends started. It's a fundraiser that is raising money to feed the evening shifts at the ICU at Bellevue. The creative community has stepped up significantly. Rosie O'Donnell bringing her show back on one night and raising more than $600,000. artists do best is we collaborate. We come up with great ideas that are creative and then we find ways to work together to make things happen. It's what puts on a Broadway show. It's a collaboration of all of these people with disparate talents from disparate worlds, different parties, different races, all getting together for one single purpose, one single cause and something miraculous happens. Look what we can do human beings when we decide to work together and collaborate the benefit that people are most talking about recently was for artists striving to end poverty, an online celebration of Stephen Sondheim's 90th birthday. I'd like to propose a toast. Raul Esparza called me and asked if I would do it. I've always wanted to sing Ladies Who Lunch. Here's to the ladies who lunch. Everybody laughs. A light bulb went off and I thought, what if Meryl and Audra and I all share the song? But it wasn't going to be a polished performance. It would be, you know, as though we're sitting in the middle of the day in our bathrobes getting a little drunk. Another reason not to move. Another one to stay there. We thought this will either work and be very funny or it'll end our careers. Everybody rise, rise. Ah, great job. I contracted COVID, but I got through it and I was like most of New York City, going to the window at seven o'clock every night and cheering on all the essential workers, the EMS people, the doctors, the nurses. One day I realized, oh, I can take a big breath again and I'm not coughing anymore. And so I just spontaneously started singing after everybody, you know, the, the applause wore down outside. This is my quest to follow that star no matter how hopeless no matter how far 
the song is about trying. And that's what we're all in the middle of right now, particularly all those essential workers who are literally on the front lines. This is just going to be a one-off. And then the, the next day I came back again and I noticed, oh, there's a crowd of people gathering on the street. And then the crowd got bigger and bigger and bigger. <laughs> Well, for the moment, Broadway is changed beyond recognition. But you know, when I first appeared on Broadway in 1973, Broadway was half dead. And within three or four years, my first years on Broadway, it came roaring back. It's the essence of, of live theater, that it is alive. It never dies. Once it is possible, to begin bringing audiences back, it may also be the case that we have to think about lowering ticket prices and maybe we will have a younger audience and maybe we will have a more diverse audience. Out of all this tragedy, there might be some silver linings for Broadway. This is a really, really, really great opportunity for Broadway to be reborn. Day after day, I stay locked up in the room. How do you once we get back to Broadway, I feel like it's kind of crazy because I'm like, my body is like, I'm like kind of like uh, getting chills just thinking about it because I know it's going to be so powerful. I will return. I'm looking forward to being reconnected. I'm looking forward to hugs. I'm looking forward to random theater backstage shenanigans. What I look forward to most when Broadway comes back is uh, sitting in a seat with strangers right next to me and watching and experiencing together whatever it is that's happening on the stage. The theater is not something you can watch again later, maybe if you don't have time to watch it now or put it on pause. That, that That's not what it is. It's happening in real time. It's one long cut, one long take that goes from the beginning to the end. And that's what makes it so magical. And that's why it's gonna be so joyous when we all can sit on the seat together and return to the theater. And man, I'll be the first one there. <laughs>